This ain't no game, kid. Well, it's been a hell of a week. I was gearing up to make you guys one of those glory devlogs. You know, the ones where game devs prune their bonsai trees and prepare meals. But you see, I had to move house. And though moving house is exciting, it's also a bit... Yeah. But I was not about to let rooms full of wires and boxes of trash stand in the way of some quality game dev. To me, game dev is more than just a profession, but more like an obsession or an addiction. An epic pursuit of self-discovery. I mean, those late nights at the computer could really teach you something about yourself, right? And at this point, I was absolutely itching to do some game dev. With all the moving, I knew my dev time would be fairly fragmented and without a desk, less efficient. So I prepared some tasks that would match that rhythm and workflow. Things like level polish and some light game design. And to kick things off, I decided to do some beat chart work on paper. For those of you who are new to game design, a beat chart or a beat sheet is a document that contains different information about a level. Themes, enemies, playstyle, backgrounds, objectives, things like that. It's an extremely useful tool that can be used to cross-check against other levels' beat charts. Making sure levels are not too similar, have progression mechanics, and contrast well thematically against each other. Without a dedicated dev space and being surrounded by boxes, I was having some trouble finding my rhythm. I had to relocate. So this is what I like to call game dev in the car. Air conditioning. Nice. Yeah, I'm not sure working from my car is going to quite cut it. Using my beach sheet as a guide, I started adding some thematic diversity to the early levels of my game. Grass, rocks, plants, it's fairly easygoing and fun work which uses the artistic part of your brain. As a tip, depending on the game you're making, be mindful about adding the exact same visual object in close proximity to one another. Doing so can catch and distract the player's eye. After adding a little bit more shrubbery, I started to bring in these five-pronged spiky fan plants that will be visually iconic to this area. Part of the visual hook for this environment, you could say. Having a unique and distinctive characteristic to each level's theme is a great way to make it memorable and stand out from other levels. And because this area is called the Windy Coast, I had a designer's obligation to, well, make it look windy. And I did so by oscillating each independent leaf of this plant on its own axis. I even rigged this bush with animated bones to create this interesting mesh deformation look. I then continue to block in the foreground layer, creating a nice feeling of visual depth. And to continue the windy look, I added these pairs of circular bushes that oscillate on their z-axes at independent intervals. The same technique was applied to the bushes in the background. Hopefully this will give me a nice organic looking movement. <laughs> we'll see. Ah, this is... oh my god. Yeah, I mean, get this chair. Yeah, this is not going to work. Like, at all. I needed a nice, open, serene place for some contrast. And what better place to find serenity than at the beach? My shoes, my shoes! God damn it! Now this was more like it. And what better place to finish working on the windy coast area than on a windy coast? <laughs> it's kind of poetic. I really wanted to finish this wind effect. So I started layering different particle systems, creating this gust effect, tweaking the velocity to get different results. I have to admit, I do love fooling around with the Unity particle system. Once you get acquainted with it, it's actually quite fun and intuitive. Next up, I added these long wind lines using particle trails, adding axis curves to the velocity, creating this nice wavy effect. Looks pretty cool. I'm also a big fan of mixing my particle effects with frame-by-frame -frame animations, like with this swirl effect here. It gives it this nice kind of tactile, hand-drawn feel. I'll then program this swirl to appear in different locations at different intervals to make it feel more natural. Well, I think it's about time to hit that play button and see how this turned out. Whoa, yeah, that's actually looking pretty windy. I've got to say, I'm very happy with the outcome of this. The way the foreground is moving mixed with those particle streaks, it's really cool. And if any of this looks remotely interesting to you, which I really hope it does, then be sure to give Blood and Meat a wish list. I'll drop a link down below. Wow, this day had really turned around for me. It's as if everything was working out exactly to plan. It's like nothing could disrupt... 
What the hell? Sand everywhere. <laughs> yeah, it was time to leave, but not without some beach acrobatics. After my sandy adventure, I decided to be a little bit more practical and went to the local library. At least I had some Wi-Fi here, but there were just too many lurkers lurking about. There was only one rational option left. I had to set up this new home studio once and for all. But just like game dev, there were a few obstacles in my way. Yeah, and this box, believe it or not, contains a monitor. A super, ultra, hyper, curved, yeah. I mean, this thing is absolutely amazing. And a big shout out and thank you to my friend Chris for hooking me up with this. Slap on some LED lights. I also bought a new RTX card to move those pixels around. And some dark force compelled me to pull my keyboard apart and decide to clean it. Because that's a good idea, right? What? Quirky. Quirky. You oh. lose. Yeah, I think it's time for a break. Ah, yes. Sun and fresh air. The solution to many problems. Well, my new game dev studio is complete. Come on in. This is the new control station. This may sound strange, but this new setup was kind of intimidating me. I mean, I was used to working in a laundry off glitchy 15 year old monitors. This here is very different. You would think with all these new shiny gizmos and toys that productivity would start flowing immediately. You see, there's a novelty phase with these new things and you can easily get pulled into a appreciation loop, let's call it. If there's some joke about game devs changing light bulbs, then I don't know it. Super Daylight 3000 Lumens. Huh. It's time to dev. What the? Must resist. Ah, oh, screw it. Boom! This is incredible. Hey, what the? The little human had returned. I'm a play. The car game. <laughs> this ain't no game, kid. This is Forza. Come on, let's go. <laughs> it seems I had underestimated the driving ability of this tiny human. Don't come back. All right, now it's seriously time to dev. Very seriously. Like very, very seriously. I read a proverb once that important things should not be left until the end of the day. Makes sense. Must stay awake. Have you ever been so exhausted that you forget how to write the most simplest of common code syntax like get component. Yeah. Boop. 
Get a component. Oh, not again. And a big thank you to all my Patreon supporters who have helped make this video possible. I love you all.